In this example, we have a plant whose transfer function is given here, and a unit feedback loop was designed to control that plant. A unit feedback loop means that we are measuring the output and there is no function in this feedback line. And the U in negative unit feedback loop also means that the feedback here is negative. We now have a control system for our plant and you are going to study how the system behaves in the temporal domain. In particular, we are interested in the percent overshoot of this system when subjected to a step input. The exercise that we're going to do here is a bit different from what you saw in the lecture. We're going to solve this in the hard way. We are going to look at the temporal response and then take the derivative of the temporal response, find the maximum, the minimum, and then calculate the overshoot. This is just to show how the equations that we have in the lecture uh, were found, but it's not necessarily how we should later uh, calculate overshoots in this sort of systems because you have better tools that were designed in the lecture. And again, the objective here is just to go back to the fundamentals and see if you didn't have those equations, how we would address this problem. The first step here is to find, of course, the closed loop transfer function y over r. y over r is simply the line function to s plus 8 divided by s times s plus 4, all divided by 1 plus the same function. We know now how to simplify this, and the result here after simplification that we covered before is 2 s plus 8 divided by this multiplies 1, so we have s squared plus 4s plus 2s, that is plus 6s, and plus 16. If you're now interested in the percent overshoot for a step input, we can simply replace our input here with the Laplace transform of a step, which is 1 over s. So here we have now an expression for y of s, which is this expression times 1 over s, which is the input we are considering. We know that this now falls into a standard form. We could very well simply use the equations that we developed before to find the percent overshoot. We can identify omega n, we can identify zeta, and then using the equations we find the percent overshoot. But let's do this again, let's do this in the hard way, just to see how those equations were derived. This analysis will require this expression to be written in partial fractions. We know how to do partial fractions now, so I'm going to skip that. But just to recall, we can have a over s plus something over s squared plus s plus, plus 6s plus 16. If you look at the damping ratio here, the damping ratio will be less than 1, <clears throat> which means that we cannot simplify this expression, so we need on top here bs plus c. So you have bs plus c over s squared plus 6s plus 16 plus a over s. We can also solve for a, b, and c. And the result I'm going to write here is 1 over s minus the top here becomes s plus 4. So this is the partial fraction decomposition of this expression. Because we want to do this the hard way, now we can find y of t. And again, we can simply go to a table of Laplace transform of use mat or use MATLAB to do that and you find y of t. We know how to do that, so I'm going to skip this part of the, uh, the problem again, because our objective is to simply look at the overshoot from the temporal response. So I'm just going to write here y of t that we can find through a table of Laplace transform and through a little bit of simplification because of this s plus 4 on the numerator here. And here is the time response, the inverse Laplace of, the, of y of s. This is not surprising, we have a exponential n sinusoidal component, and this is because the damping ratio here is less than 1. If we plot this expression, we should find something that resembles this curve. So this is time and this is y of t. We should get something like that. And the final value here appears to be 
1. When t tends to infinity, this whole term goes to 0. We want the percent overshoot. The percent overshoot is how much it goes beyond the final value here. It's this part of the expression. We want now to know what this variation is, how away it goes from 1 before it settles at 1. So this clearly, in this specific case, represents the maximum of y of t. How do we find the maximum of the function? Well, from calculus, you remember that if you take the derivative of y of t, that's the slope. And the slope here is 0. So if you now find the derivative of this equated to 0, and so for t, we'll find the time t1 when this maximum value occurs. So we now take dy of t dt, the partial derivative, we set that to 0, and so for t. And this t that we find here that satisfies this expression is the time when the maximum value of y of t occurs. And this time, I'm going to skip this process because it's simple math, the time when the peak occurs is 1 Point zero zero three seconds. So this is t1. This is the time when the peak occurs. This is not the maximum value here. This is the time when the maximum value occurs. Now to find this maximum value, simply evaluate y of t at t1. So y of t at t1 we can find by simply replacing 1.003 st here and calculating the result, and that will be 1.035. So this overshoot here, this difference is 1.035 minus 1, it's 0 0.035. We take the temporal response here, find the derivative with respect to time that gives us the slope. We know that the slope when the function reaches its maximum is zero, so equating that to zero and solving for t gives us the time when that peak occurs. Now evaluate y of t at t1 to find the value of the function at t1, and that is 1.035. What is our percent overshoot? Well, the percent overshoot is how far it goes beyond the final value 1. So that is 1.035 minus the final value 1 divided by the final value, which is 1, times 100, if you want to express this in percent. So the percent overshoot is 3.5%. In the second part of this exercise, you're interested in the steady state error when a step of magnitude A is applied to the system. If a step of magnitude A is applied, then R of S is A over S. So here is the transfer function we found before. If we now multiply both sides here by R of S, we get the expression for Y of S. So by multiplying this by A over S, which is the input you are considering now, we get the expression for the time response. Now you have an expression for the output when you know the input. We can now define the error as the difference between them, that is the desired output minus the actual output y of s. The error becomes r of s is a over s and y of s is this. Here we can factor a over s. So you have a over s times 1 minus that. So this is expression for the error at all times. The steady state error is the limit of this times s when s tends to 0. So the error in steady state is the limit 
when s tends to 0 of e of s times s. Now replace e of s by this entire function. This s from the theorem cancels this s out. So the error in the steady state becomes the limit when s tends to 0 of a times that. And now when s tends to 0, we are left with 1 minus s is 0, so minus 16 divided by 16, minus 1, and the steady state error is 0.